Welcome back. We are continuing our route down to Grasby. If you want to see how we got here, I left a link in the description for the previous episode. We are just leaving Windermere and making our way to Troutbeck Bridge Village. The main secondary school for Windermere and Ambleside, the Lake School, is located in the village, as is the postal sorting office for the area. Troutbeck Bridge takes its name from where the road crosses the Troutbeck. A petrol station, convenience store, inn, restaurant and gym serve the community. The Troutbeck is a fast-flowing stream of the Lake District. Its name comes from Old Norse, and appears in documents from 1292 as Trutabic. The river rises between the peaks of Stony Cove Pike and Thornthwaite Crag in the High Street Range, at a height of about 1,970 feet. On our left is White Cross Bay Holiday Park. It is one of the biggest in the area right in front of the lake. There are hundreds of caravans and a number of activities waiting for the holiday makers. Between 1942 and 1945, the site was used as a wartime aircraft factory, operated by Short Brothers. During that period, 35 Short Sunderland flying boat aircraft were built and used by the Royal Air Force, RAF, during the Second World War. A team of 1,500 workers was relocated to the factory at Windermere and lived with their families on the nearby Calgoth estate. Neither of the two huge specially built buildings, an assembly hangar and factory, remain, but the flying boat slipway is still intact and part of the current leisure park. The Brockhole Lake District Visitor Centre is a visitor park and tourist attraction managed by the Lake District National Park Authority. It includes the Brockhole House and 30 acres of grounds, including 10 acres of formal gardens and an adventure playground. The centre organises several activities, including orienteering, kayaking and open water swimming, as well as regular exhibitions. The site that is now the visitor centre was bought in 1896 by William Gaddam, a silk merchant from Manchester, to build a summer house. He had the house built the following year, to a design by the architect Dan Gibson. The gardens were created by Thomas Mawson. Mawson, who is known for his work in the design of gardens during the arts and crafts movement, had previously collaborated with Gibson at Graithwaite Hall. Beatrix Potter was a frequent visitor to the house and refers to it in her journals. In 1946, William Gaddam died and the house was sold. The Lake District National Park Authority purchased the property in 1966.
We are shortly arriving in Ambleside. The Ambleside is a small town in itself, but it is a base for hiking, mountaineering and mountain biking, making it a go-to place for everyone arriving in the Lake District. It has several hotels, guest houses, restaurants and shops. Specialist shops sell equipment and guides and give recommendations to walkers, backpackers and climbers. Ambleside is a popular starting point for the Fairfield Horseshoe, a hill-walking ridge hike. A concentration of 10 pubs or bars within a quarter mile radius reflects how the local hospitality market serves residents, tourists, visitors and the student population associated with the University of Cumbria. The town's name is derived from the Old Norse Emel Seto, which literally translates as river. Ambleside grew as a focal point for the local woolen industry in the later Middle Ages. In 1650, it gained a charter for a weekly market on Wednesdays and cattle fairs at Whitsuntide and in October. Several fulling mills by the 16th century and a paper mill on Scandal Beck by 1681. A large mill for the manufacture of woolen goods opened C1797. But woolen trade had declined by 1807 when Ambleside was described as a paltry little market town with little trade. The wool market closed in 1825. Fulling mills closed as the textile industry declined to be replaced by bobbin turning from the mid 19th to mid 20th centuries. In the 19th century, Ambleside also had a tannery, brewery and sawmill. Short-lived knitwear and toy factories in the later 20th century after declining of traditional industries. Quarries outside town, both in Coniston Limestone and Green Slate, the latter notably at Pett's Quarry, Kirkstone, in the 20th century. Ambleside's position on a main arterial route through Lake District linking Kendall and Cockermouth, both fostered its market function and placed it on the tourist route. On our left St Mary's Church. It was built in the 1850s to a design by George Gilbert Scott in the Gothic Revival style. The building is constructed of slate, the typical building stone of the locality, and sandstone which is used for dressings and the spire. The decision to build the church reflects the coming of the railway to Windermere in 1847 and the subsequent expansion of Ambleside because of the increased opportunities for tourism. In front of us is the Bridge House. Bridge House is possibly the most photographed building in the Lake District and a popular subject for many artists including Turner. A tiny building, originally an Apple store for nearby Ambleside Hall, was built over Stock Beck to escape land tax. Once five mills were driven by the power of Stock Beck and some may still be seen nearby. 
It is said that at some time a family with six children lived here in the two rooms. We are arriving in Rydal. The Rydal village is a small cluster of houses, a hotel and St Mary's Church on the A591 road midway between Ambleside and Grasmere. There are four notable parts of Rydal. The Rydal Hall, which is a large detached house on the outskirts of the village, was built as the country seat of the Le Fleming Baronets and was sold with its gardens to the Diocese of Carlisle in 1970. The Rydal Water, which is a lake both supplied and drained by the river Rothay, flows from Grasmere upstream and towards Windermere downstream. The waters of the southern half of the lake are leased by the Lowther estate to the National Trust, whilst those of the northern half belong to the estate of Rydal Hall. Navigation is prohibited, except for residents of Rydal Hall. The next notable part is the Rydal Mount. Rydal Mount is a house in the small village. It is best known as the home of the poet William Wordsworth, from 1813 to his death in 1850. It is currently operated as a writer's home museum. The last part is the White Moss Route. This route is unique as it's fully built with accessibility in mind. This route starts at White Moss Common, traveling through the woodland before reaching Rydal Water. It then follows the shoreline before heading up to Rydal Caves and then continues to Grasmere.
78-room Daffodil Hotel and Spa was built in 1855 by Levi Hodgson and was originally called Brown's Lake Hotel after its owner, Edward Brown. Shortly after the hotel opened, it was visited by the Prince of Wales, who later became Edward VII, and as a result, Brown decided to change the hotel's name to the Prince of Wales Hotel. In 1984, the town end area of Grasmere, where the hotel is situated, was made a conservation area. The hotel was briefly known as Thistle Grasmere, followed by the waterside. It was opened as the Daffodil Hotel and Spa on July 21, 2012, and was owned and run by the Harwood and Brady families. With this left turn, we are arriving at Grasmere Town. The name itself has its first possibility, the lake, mere, flanked by grass. Although early spellings with Greece or Grease might suggest Old Norse gris, meaning young pig, as the first element, evidence points to the Old English Old Norse gress, meaning grass, with the modern form influenced by Standard English. The village is on the river Rote, which flows into Grasmere Lake about 0.33 miles to the south. The village is overlooked from the northwest by the rocky hill of Helm Crag, popularly known as the Lion and the Lamb or the Old Lady at the organ. These names derive from the shape of rock formations on its summit, depending on the side from which it is viewed. The several walks that begin in the village include the ascent of Helm Crag, a longer route up to Fairfield, and a moderate 200 metre ascent to Easdale Tarn. The village is also on the route of Alfred Wainwright's Coast to Coast Walk. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week with the next episode. Please subscribe for more episodes and press the like if you enjoyed today's tour. See you next time.